Um, but when it comes to goal setting, I mean, how you work with your team is really no different than how you would do it with yourself. You're just adding in a layer of, okay, how do I communicate this now so that somebody else is helping me accomplish that. You're listening to Oh Shit, I'm the Boss Now with your host, Jackie Koch, the podcast with all the tips and tools to help you succeed when all of a sudden you have the realization that you're the one in charge. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the show. Oh shit, I'm the boss now. I'm your host, Jackie Koch. And today we are diving into all things goal setting, specifically a framework on how to set goals and crush your goals as an entrepreneur. I'm joined and I get the pleasure of meeting Kate Erickson. She joins me on the show and Kate is the heartbeat of Entrepreneurs on Fire an award-winning podcast where John Lee Dumas interviews inspiring entrepreneurs who are truly on fire. She's also the host of Kate's Take, where she shares a behind-the-scenes look at running a seven-figure business and co-host of Nicole and Kate Can Relate, a pod- what a great name, right? Um, a podcast about the power of conversations, and her goal is to help entrepreneurs achieve financial and lifestyle freedom. So we dig into goal setting, really how she became an entrepreneur herself and the journey she went on, and really break down a framework for you to start setting your 2023 goals and crushing them. So, so excited for you to get to hear from her. And I'm taking the framework she talks about and implementing it to get my five goals off of my whiteboard and into the world. So without further ado, let's welcome Kate to the show. Hey, Kate. Thank you so much for coming to the show. I'm so excited to dig into some of this stuff with you and have you share your wisdom with our listeners who are entrepreneurs figuring out this this leadership journey when all of a sudden they're the ones in charge. So I'm so excited that you get to share some of your knowledge. So thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, Jackie, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here and I so can relate to that feeling of like, uh, okay, what do I do now? So I'm happy to share whatever I can to help others through that phase. Amazing. Amazing. I do feel like, and I mean, I know you, you work with so many entrepreneurs, talk to so many entrepreneurs, support so many entrepreneurs. And I feel like there's a lot of resources out there for like, I don't know, some of the operational side of the business for marketing or, um, I don't know, sales, those things, but there's such a lack of resources of like action, actually like implementate, implementatable. I don't know if that's a word. Um, (laughs) we'll make it one (laughs) for the people side of your business. Like you read these books and it's like, people are so important who you hire so important. And they like make, you know, it's important, but then you're like, great. What do I do then? How do I do that? I know it's important. And that's really kind of what I hope this show solves for is, giving you people, giving entrepreneurs some of the tools that I think are missing in some of those frameworks. So um, I know that's what I'm you do. I'm all about implementation. So uh, that this is great. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So before we dive into the topic today, can you share with listeners a little bit of your background, you know, what you do now, what you did before, just a little bit of your background? Yeah. So um, I grew up so corporate minded, went to college, got my degree, looked for a job related to my degree. Of course, none of that typically ever works out and it didn't for me. Um, I thought I was going to become a college English professor. I found myself in banking jobs. Um, Funny enough, I actually worked in HR as well. Um, So I've done the whole HR thing in banks. I've had had every banking job. Um, Then I realized I don't even really like numbers. Math was actually my worst subject in school. And so I signed up for an internship at a marketing and advertising agency while I was going to grad school. So I was working at a bank, going to grad school and doing an internship at a marketing and advertising agency. And during that time, I was mentored by a genius in the advertising space. And I learned so much and I fell in love with marketing and advertising. I thought like, this is the pace I want to go at. This is so amazing. I love every bit of it. So uh, I continued in marketing and advertising. 
and then moved after I graduated. So I had to give up that job, couldn't find another marketing and advertising job. Like this is just so how it all works, right? You're kind of forced into these situations where you're like, well, this isn't what I thought was going to happen, but you figure it out. So I went back to banking again um, because I needed a job. And then I quit my banking job, tried to start my own entrepreneurial venture. That didn't work. Finally, found my way back into marketing and advertising and I know this might sound like just a lot of blabbing of me, like jumping all over the place, but I feel like that's the part of the journey that we don't really hear about that often. Like it was not just this beautiful, clear path of me finding my way to where I am now. It was really messy. I moved around a lot. I tried a lot of different things. Um, and then when I was in another marketing and advertising job, that's when I quit and I joined my husband and partner in the business that we run today called Entrepreneurs on Fire. That's amazing. I love I love that you share all of that because um, you're right. Mo- the majority of the people end up in this weird, tra- like you're almost like hopping over lily pads, like, oh, what mm-hmm. should I do now? What should I do now? And I feel like there's so much to be learned in that if you embrace it or you could be terrified by that. Um, and so that's amazing. What a well-rounded like post-school education you got. Yeah, it was like very real world experience of like, let's throw something else out there and see what she does with it. (laughs) Totally. So curious, um, was becoming an entrepreneur hard for you? Was it an easy adjustment, hard adjustment? What were some of the learnings that you remember during that time? It was really difficult for me because like I said, I grew up very corporate minded. Like I would go to jobs and I was best at someone giving me a deliverable, telling me what to do and me figuring out how to make it happen. I was great at that. And I thrived in my positions because of that. And so when it came time to make my own rules and decide what I was going to do next, I was not good at that. I was because I was used to somebody else telling me what to do. So then when it became kind of this open ended, I can do anything, I kind of thought, well, I don't even know where to start. And so I started joining a lot of like networking groups and attending mixers and meetups and stuff with with other entrepreneurs, because I thought, well, I guess the best thing I can do is put myself in a room with other people who are either experiencing what I'm experiencing right now or who have already, hopefully already experienced this and they can help me. (laughs) And that's about the time I hired my first coach. Um, I invested in a mentorship with a woman who had been running her own business for a few years at the time. And she had created a successful coaching business to help other entrepreneurs. And she taught me a lot about mindset. And that was really kind of the first time in my life that I had taken a step back and realized how important our thoughts are and what we believe and the things that we say and, you know, the whole imposter syndrome and all of that. So I really struggled through a lot of that through, I would say probably for like a year or two into my entrepreneurial journey before I finally kind of found my footing of enough confidence to think that, okay, what I'm doing, like I can make this work. And what I'm doing is actually getting me closer to my goals. And what I'm doing is having an impact for other people. Because a lot of the times, especially when you're first starting out, you put so much out there and you put so much like love and care and, and time and energy and everything into what you're doing. And a lot of the times you don't really get feedback, like not right away anyways. Uh, and it's not until you grow an audience and you start getting engagement and all of that, that you think like, oh, okay, yay, somebody's listening or somebody's reading or somebody cares enough to reach out to me. Um, so I definitely struggled in that time period of like, is anyone resonating with this? <laughs> yeah, totally. Because even though everybody in corporate complains that they never get enough feedback from their boss or whatever, you get way more than when you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> right. Well, and at least when you're in an office, like you can walk over and talk to somebody. When you're an entrepreneur, yeah. you can't always do that. A hundred percent. I know. I know. I I feel that same way. Like sometimes I'll get like positive feedback and I'm like, whoa, you you actually like this stuff? Like, great. Okay, awesome. Yay. Like yeah, it's it's funny. It's it's definitely interesting. So how long 
were you an entrepreneur, like a solo entrepreneur before you started hiring and, and bringing on some folks to support you? So, I mean, what's kind of unique about how I got into entrepreneurship is, like I said, I, I tried to start my own business that lasted about six months. And then I stopped and got a job again, because I needed to make money, I wasn't making any money. And then my second um, dip into entrepreneurship is when I joined my husband, and he had already launched entrepreneurs on fire. So it was him and one virtual team member when I joined the team. And when I joined the team, that made it, I guess, that much more interesting because then it was kind of about figuring out what my role was and how my role worked with the the virtual team member who was on board. And then, you know, John had been doing everything split with this person. So how do I fit in? How do we all work together? And that was the first time I had ever done that, you know, made up a role for myself. Um, mm -hmm. So that was kind of a challenge all in itself. And then it, I would say uh, it was probably two years before we hired our fourth um, team member. Nice, nice. Yeah, that has to be interesting to... There's that, that working with a, a spouse is a whole nother, a whole nother <laughs> topic. And then joining a team and figuring out like, where do I fit? And, and all of that, those dynamics is, is even more interesting for sure. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Um, we should do a podcast episode about how to work with your, your spouse or your significant other. Cause I feel oh, like yeah, there's so many learnings one. there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm interested now you guys, you know, you've built this team, you're, you're doing, or, you know, you have this business, you have these goals, you're, you're growing, you're helping other entrepreneurs do this as well. So I'm sure you're learning through them. And I know some, a lot of the questions I get from, um, entrepreneurs is how do I set goals for the business? How do I enroll my team? How do I make sure they're, they're involved in, 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 you know, enrolled in these goals? And so I'd love to hear from your perspective. Like, I know you love systems and processes and, and all of that stuff. Like, what are some of, I would love to start with goal setting overall for entrepreneurs. And, you know, it's the new year. So people are probably like thinking a lot about this right now. Um, and curious if you have any advice for them on where to start with goal setting for their business for 2023. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to goal setting, and I think a new year is an especially amazing time to do this. Although if anyone's tuning in and it happens to not be the new year at the time that you're listening to this, that's okay too. I actually mm -hmm. do this every quarter. So it doesn't matter what time of year it is, but all the much better if you're listening to this and it happens to be January timeframe. Um, and what I do is a reflection exercise. So I set aside an hour of my time. I commit to being disciplined and focused for that hour. I don't let interruptions or notifications or anything else touch that time. And I think back to the previous year and I ask myself, what were the greatest accomplishments that I've had over the past year? What are some of the biggest mistakes that I've made or the failures that I've had over the past year? And depending on how often you do this, like if you're doing this every quarter, then you would just be looking back at the last quarter. But if you've never done this before, I think looking back at the last year is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so what are my, my greatest accomplishments, wins, celebrations? What are my biggest failures or mistakes that I've made? And then uh, looking at those, what can you learn from that? What can you learn from the biggest wins that you had? How did that help you in your business? Um, is there something that you can continue doing along those lines that will keep creating wins for you in your business? And of the mistakes or the failures that you've had, how can you let that help inform what you do moving forward? So I think that reflecting back and looking on information that we already know can really help inform future goals. Because sometimes when you just stop and say, like, what goal should I set? Like, that's just so big and open and overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And like, where, how, how do you even start from there? So um, being able to use the information, the data, the experiences that we already have to help inform that I find is really helpful. So that would be the first step. And then awesome. from there, I think using that information to say, okay, given my reflections, what 
goals would I like to set moving forward? Um, I always like to take it one goal at a time. But if you wanted to look out over the next, I mean, I say we, we say 100 days that what will you accomplish in the next 100 days with one goal and being able to fully focus on that one goal for the next 100 days is kind of the format that we use um, for goal setting. But if you wanted to sit down and write out four things that you want to accomplish over the next year, then you could certainly, you know, break that down and say, okay, that which of these is most critical, time sensitive, what do I want to work on first? And then those other three can just be on the side burner until you're ready to take those on. Awesome. Do you ever do any of these exercises or, or do you ever have your, you know, entrepreneurs that you work with, um, like do this with, the, with their team members or is it, or, or do you ever do it with your team members? So we've done it with our team members before. Um, we've never, I guess, never really sat down and specifically taught how you would do this with your team members, like specifically and focused. Um, but we do talk a lot about working with your team how to hire the right team, onboard the right team, train the right team, get them invested and, um, you know, excited about the business goals and the brand that you're running and all of that. Um, but when it comes to goal setting, I mean, how you work with your team is really no different than how you would do it with yourself. You're just adding in a layer of, okay, how do I communicate this now so that somebody else is helping me accomplish that. And when you look at like setting a goal, breaking it down into micro goals and steps that you're going to hit along the way. And in our like 100 day outline or format, we have 10 day recaps and quarterly reviews. So every 10 days you're doing a recap and every 25 days you're doing a look back. And so within that, you're setting micro goals that you're going to hit along the way. And what I would recommend if you were then bringing a team into this is how is your team working with you alongside you in tan like however you want to look at it? Um, what are their goals that they're hitting in that time frame as well? So what would be amazing is if you did some type of outline and maybe it's not a hundred days for you, maybe it's 25 days for you, maybe it's 200 days for you. It depends on what the goal is, how big the project is. But if you were to have those reviews with your team every single time and everyone's checking in and reporting on what it is that they've accomplished and reporting on any um, struggles that they're having, reporting on any issues that have come up, um, you know, maybe you've assigned something to a team member and, and they realize that they need um, funds to purchase a program that's going to help them accomplish that step. So when you have those regular check-ins, like this is the super simple stuff that gets missed because everyone's really busy and they don't have time for it. But having check-ins like that and being consistent on a daily basis with tracking things and, and reporting on things and, and doing those recaps and those reviews, that's what's going to push you forward because you can head that stuff immediately when it's happening, not on day 50 when you're like, you were supposed to do that on like day 12. And they're like, yeah, well, I've been trying to meet with you and you've been busy, mm -hmm. so I haven't been able to. So I think it's actually these very simple checkpoints that we can put in place, especially when we're working with our team so that, you know, we're all moving together versus like one person taking off and the rest of the team being like, what just happened? <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. I mean, I think, yeah, the the most important thing is getting it on the calendar and then showing up and doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so simple, but it takes effort. And yeah. it takes you like not wanting something. You're not going to always want to, you're going to have some something else on fire that you're trying to like deal with. But if you don't honor the meeting you set and like make it almost sacred, then the whole goal setting is pointless if you're not going to actually do the work to check in to, to make progress towards it. Right. Yeah. Um, I love the idea of a hundred days and like only picking one goal to do in a hundred days. Um, because then it's focused attention. So I, I love that. And I, I do think if you only have to focus on one goal, it's easier to, to have those check-ins versus if you're doing five things, it's like, okay, everything's urgent. 
and important, like nothing's the most important, right? Everything's right. important. Um, so nothing gets done. So I love that tip for sure. Um, do you have any platforms or tools that you found that work really great for tracking some of these things or, and, and, and collaborating with your team? I think a lot of folks listening to this show don't go to an office and work with their team members all the time. They're virtual. So do you have any recommended tools or platforms that you've really found that help with this communication and transparency on goals? Yeah, I love Asana. It's a task and project management system. I don't know if you've ever used it before. It's just A-S-A-N-A. Um, just like Trello or Basecamp or like any number of these amazing platforms that we have access to that like were barely in existence 10 years ago when I started doing this. So I'm so grateful for them. Um, but having something as simple as that to just I'll um, work out my project in Asana. You can create separate projects. You can have visual boards. You can have timelines. You can have due dates, um, individual tasks, groups of tasks, and your team can all work in the program together. So you give access to projects based on who's involved in them. And then it becomes like this ever evolving in the cloud, always updated um, picture of where you're at. So as an example, if you were putting together a project that you were working with your team on, and let's say you you build out each of the micro goals and the actual step, the action steps that are required for that, um, then I would be able to go in and update mine every day. And, and my team members are able to go in and update theirs every day, leave comments, um, ask questions. So it's a, it's a very robust platform. I use it in the most simple form. I've talked to so many people who are like, you've recommended Asana, but it's so complicated. And I, I like, I just don't get how to use it. Like I use it so simply. <laughs> I don't even use the paid version. I literally use the free version of it. And I create projects and I create tasks and I give them due dates and I leave comments on them and I put links where they're applicable. Um, and that's been really helpful for my team and I, I can assign things to them. They can assign things to me. and. Um, yeah, that has worked really beautifully for us. I would agree. I love, I have really been leaning into Asana lately. Mm. Um, I was a I I was a solopreneur for such a long time, and then I have a f I have somebody on my team now, and I was like, oh, I need to translate this from a written to do list into Asana, and I kind of like kicked and screamed about it. Um, but I I I actually did a call with someone who was an Asana expert and like just helped me set up boards that made sense. And so like once the foundation was there, I was like, oh, wow, like this is powerful um, for sure. I'm curious, do you do you have like your own goals board or how like in, in track goals in like its own project? Um, so I I use a journal. I use a journal. So we publish a, a journal called the Freedom Journal. And it's 100 days to accomplishing your big goal. And so in that journal, every single day, you're writing out what are the things I'm going to accomplish today? Um, and what did I accomplish yesterday? And what am I going to accomplish tomorrow? What lessons am I learning? What worked well? What didn't work well? So it's kind of like this outline that you're following every single day for accountability, consistency, and actually checking in with yourself back to that whole like reflection thing and, and being able to use the data and the information that you already have to help you moving forward. So the journal is largely like where I'm documenting actual things. And then when I have those bigger like milestones or those micro goals that I'm trying to hit, that's what I'm putting into Asana. So yeah, a goal would have its own project. And then perhaps like a lot of sub, um, you know, those micro goals within it. Um, that I'm working towards with my team. Cool. I love that you use your journal. That's amazing. I mean, obviously <laughs> I know you would, but I love that you reference that. That's a great, uh, we'll make sure we put a link to that in the show notes. If, if people can buy it, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, so that would be cool then to have, and maybe you guys do this, but do you have everyone on your team pick a goal and like get a new journal every 100 days? Or is that reserved just for you as the leader? No, absolutely. We've sent our team these the journals. Um, 
a couple of our team members have used them for like health goals. So uh, we have oh, a lot cool. of people that use the journal for like weight loss or fitness, um, those types of goals. Um, we, so you can use it for personal too. Um, and then business wise, yeah, of course, I mean, we're always encouraging our team to learn new programs if they ever find courses that they want to jump into. Um, so they absolutely are working on goals of their own. Um, typically when, when we're like, when I set a goal for the team and am assigning things to them, then I guess they could use their journal to help them through that. But typically that would be, I let them use a journal for their, for yeah, their, their own, stuff. their own goals. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense for sure. But that's a great idea. I mean, you as an entire team, if you were all working on a goal together, each of you could be like from your point of view, from your standpoint, using the journal to get whatever your milestones are within that bigger goal. Yeah, for sure. Or maybe, maybe there's some goals that really are not, that are more individual goals. Right. And so like Mm -hmm. every quarter you could be like, okay, guys, we're getting together and we're all going to pick like for the next 100 days, what are each of us working on? And then you do touch bases on, you know, you, you make them team touch bases in uh, every 10 day on the look back or something like that. That could be a really cool way to do it for sure. Yeah, definitely. So encouraging and then inspiring because when you're in a group of people and everybody else is like hitting their milestones, that's such a great like inspiration for you, um, totally. you know, to work harder on your own. Totally. Um, so do you ever during that 100 days, like what happens if like during that 100 days, you're like, this was the wrong goal. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not what I should be working on. Do you have advice for what, um, you know, if they go to a 10 day look back period and they're like, you know what, I've just decided this is not the right goal I should be working on. What do they do then? Scrap it. Make a new goal. I mean, they're like, so I feel like so often we let that like sunk cost bias get us Mm. and we stay in things that don't matter because we feel like we've invested so much time or so much money or so many resources. Who cares? If you find out that that's not the right thing for you, for your team, for your business, scrap it. There's no, there's nothing that says that you can't just stop and all the much better that you're then going to be able to refocus your energy and, um, and your resources and your team and everything on a goal that truly does matter. And there's nothing to be ashamed of there either. I mean, how many of us have set out to do something and then decided either, well, I thought I was really passionate about this, but I'm actually really not now that I'm doing it. Or, you know, you work really hard towards something and and then something shifts and you decide a blog isn't the right thing for your business and you want to do a podcast instead, like that's okay. We all encounter this type of stuff on our journey. And I think those of us who are reaching our goals faster and making more progress are the ones who are willing to say, like, this isn't right. I'm going to stop and I'm going to refocus my energy. Yeah, for sure. And that's also where the reflection comes in, right? Um, and, And learning from that. Um, and being okay with, yeah, I, I don't need to repeat what you just said because it was so great because I agree with you. So yes, what she just said. Um, <laughs> so I guess in, in wrapping up, um, I love the idea of setting one goal every 100 days. If you think about it, that's what almost four goals in a year that you get done. Yeah. And if you make them big enough, like that can be such a huge impact on your business. I mean, I look over at my whiteboard, I have five goals that I want to do and none of them are getting worked on because when I look at all five, it's so damn overwhelming. But if I break out like, okay, if I did one of those every 100 days, almost all of them would be done next year. So I'm taking that advice because that is, that would move my business so far. So thank you for that. Yes. Um, I love it. And then doing the look back period, look, looking back, of course, over the over 2022, which I've already kind of done. So I feel like I'm pretty good at that. But that's great advice. Um, we will definitely link where we, you know, all of the stuff to go find this information in the show notes for any listeners. Um, I'd love to to wrap up by asking you one quick question. Um, I, I should have told you I was going to ask you this to give you time <laughs> to think about it. But um I'd love to know, like looking back at your entrepreneurship journey, 
Like what is a major, oh shit, I'm the boss now moment you had in your business? It can be team related, not team related, anything. Just is there any major moment that sticks out to you where you were like, oh shit, I got to do that? Yeah. It was after we, so we live in Puerto Rico right now. We moved our business from California to Puerto Rico and a lot of stuff turns out a lot of stuff's different in Puerto Rico. Um, one of those things that's different is how you process payments through a merchant and a gateway and all of that. So we had to move all of our like merchant accounts and everything had to be set up like a new here. And in that transition, one of our our American Express, none of our like accounts told us that our American Express could no longer be processed under our main merchant account, that we needed a separate American Express, oh, no. just American Express uh, merchant account to process those payments. So our gateway was taking the payments through like our recurring memberships. I mean, we had thousands of people on like monthly recurring memberships a lot of them paying with American Express. The transaction was being processed, but it wasn't being um, taken by the merchant because we didn't have an American Express account and we didn't know that we needed that. A couple months later, you know, balancing the books and, and being a, a good business owner and entrepreneur, um, I realized that that's happening and that's my responsibility in our business. And it was like, the biggest like gut punch, heart sinking, like, you know, my throat like closing up, very much a freak out moment of like, this is my responsibility. I totally dropped the ball. This is a huge deal. And how do I fix it? That was a very big oh shit moment. <laughs> I can imagine. I can yeah. imagine. We all have so many of those where you don't know until you don't, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Um, well, I hope it all worked out and that you were able to <laughs> recoup some of it and figure it out. Um, but those are the, being an entrepreneur, you're just like, okay, well, I have to figure this out and <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. And hopefully that's where some podcasts and networks come in. So handy, you can be like, use your resources and stuff. So um, thank you for sharing. I'm sure some other entrepreneurs listening are like, yep, I'm not the only one who learned the hard way. I am not an idiot. This is just part of it. So thank you for, for sharing that. That's a big yeah. one. Um, <laughs> and thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your wisdom with everybody. I'm so excited for, um, my new 100 day plan as well. Um, I'll keep you posted how my goals are going. Yes, please do. Thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed chatting. Of course. Okay. We'll talk again soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye, Jackie. If you're not driving, stop and take a moment to share this episode with someone who you thought about while listening. Share it with your team to show them you're committed to their growth. Share it with a fellow business owner in your network who you know will be moved by the message. Heck, share it with your mother, your brother, your sister, or your cousin. Your support in growing the show means the world to me. 